Welcome to Freezer Milk Podcast. I'm your host, Bridget, along with my husband, Chris. Podcast where we talk about the comedic side and serious side of parenting, life, and relationships. We are boy parents. Um, We have two boys, Enzo and Rhett, with about a six-year age gap between the two. You can check out our website, freezermilk.com. Also, feel free to follow us on Instagram at freezermilkpodcast. Thanks and hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Another exciting week has gone by. It's been a lot of fun. You had to travel for work this week. And travel for work this week. and We had Rhett's uh, first birthday party. That was a lot. We're not used to having people in the house. <laughs> and we kept it super small. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was really only under 10 people and it was exhausting and loud. We realized how much of a homebodies we've become. Work from home, pandemic, all of it. I don't even like going for drives anymore. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. I think Rhett, so there was three babies that are all within like six weeks of each other and then Enzo and then like one other kid that's about Enzo's age and I think Rhett actually really enjoyed it I think he like was so fascinated to just be around the other two babies and because I don't think he's ever been around another baby um he's done like little play dates with those kids here and there but this was definitely like the longest amount of time he it was so interesting to just watch him because he's so like independent and very not not interested in for back for lack of a better term the bullshit. He just <laughs> you know he uh, was very adamant about playing fairly and nice and just being him. And he was just kind of walking around and doing his thing, and it was kind of fun to watch. It's interesting because what four months ago when we started this podcast, Rhett was not about being independent. At yeah. all. No. And he still goes through pockets, especially like if it's just me here, where he does not exhibit very much independence at all. Yeah. Um, but he is getting more. Like today, he had some independence, you know, why I was watching him, where he was content to play with his toys and play on the, the pillows and cushions and in his play corner and just very content doing that, which is, it's like a new version of him. Mm. It's really interesting to see that it's evolved, but it was really cool to see it like in action with other children at his little birthday party. I realized how quiet he is. He's a very quiet baby. Over his, over the weekend, well, you know, when we had the birthday party, like compared to the other two. Yeah. Just so much more quiet, you know, just quiet. Mm-hmm. It was very interesting. I think a large majority of it is that Enzo, like Enzo talks a lot, but Enzo is not... Very loud. He's not a loud talker. No. You know, he talks more of a hushed tone um and i think that plays a lot into it you talk super loud so i don't know i don't know why he hasn't picked that up for me it was was funny to watch you and my mom this weekend oh yeah yeah because you guys just continue you know you're constantly trying to talk over each other (laughs) and my mom is a very loud person i think that's probably where i get it from because i've always wanted to be heard kind Mm -hmm. of deal she brought up the boat again that's all she brings up or breastfeeding in bottles (laughs) <laughs> yeah, elaborate on that a little bit. So I made a smoothie um, one of the nights that you were out of town traveling because I was just like, you know, a smoothie sounds really good. And I was like, I'll let Rhett have some, see if he's interested. He doesn't, you know, he started getting better about drinking water out of like a sippy cup, um, like with a straw, like a straw cup. But he still won't take any milk out of it, um, like breast milk, and he doesn't do regular milk. And he doesn't, we don't do juice. So pretty much water is the only thing he's had aside from breast milk in a cup. So I gave him the smoothie in like a sippy cup with a straw and he was very suspect and he like figured out how to take a sip and he kind of like rolled it around in his mouth for a couple minutes and like looked at the bottle and was like, hmm, this is actually pretty fucking good guys. (laughs) And then he was like all hamming it and cheesing, smiling and like, you know, just he, he drank almost an entire like cup of it. Right. It was crazy. And so it was super cute. So I sent the picture to you and I sent it to your mom and I was like, hey, like made a smoothie, let Rhett try some. And what did she say? Like, what was the... I think I sent you a screenshot. Like, what was her verbiage on her reply? Oh, she said... Um, you sent her some photos, and you said, made, made a smoothie, gave Rhett some. And she said, so much for mother's milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the fucking bottle. And, like, breastfeeding and getting him off the breast. What is, like, the her go-to? Like, because we had her trying to kind of offset some of our days because we didn't have 
um, child care for Rhett. Yeah. So she would come here, and her biggest complaint, and it was constant too, she, she was like, you need, you know, I just wish he didn't, I wish he would take a bottle, you know, because it would make it so much easier. It's not like she paid attention to him when she was here anyway, but that was the whole thing. She, she, she had this huge argument. That... And she constantly would ask, like, well, I stopped nursing after, like, five weeks, so when are you going to stop nursing, Bridget? You know, he he's six months old. It's been it's been more than enough time. Right. I'm like, no, you're not the expert yeah, on this. Yeah, your kids turned out great. <laughs> Got a great track record with them. Like, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. And so I just, when it's she just sent rude. that... rude. I don't understand if she just, just doesn't understand that she's being rude, or if she's just... She does, and she doesn't care. She told your sister, who's married to a non-white person, that she wanted to get a handgun to keep those people out. Of the neighborhood? Of the neighborhood. (laughs) She's scary. Oh, man. And your sister was like, you realize your grandchildren are mixed, and my husband is African-American. Right. And she was like, oh, well, not him. Like, talk Just about, all the other ones. Talk about fucking rude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's out there, man. She's she's off her freaking rocker. She's deteriorating quick. Talk oh, about that. I know. The plate when she was getting the tacos. Yeah, I know. She's got some stuff going on. But that's what happens as you age. She like it she wouldn't stop shaking. Like the whole plate. And she just tries to say like she had too much caffeine, but like her the whole plate was m- moving probably four to five inches yeah. up and down. It's mm-hmm. just crazy. Like, she just is in super denial about that. Yeah. What's more crazy to me is that, um, so Rhett's new nanny that we have coming in and your mom are the exact same age. Yeah, her nanny's in a lot better shape mentally, physically. Seeing how mentally the new nanny is with it makes me realize how much your mom isn't. Yeah. When you, like, compare, like, their, like, mental sharpness currently and realize, like, they're the same age. Mm-hmm. That's scary. You she's, like our you like our new nanny. Oh my gosh, she's the TV never even goes on. Well, that was the so that when we first brought her on, that was that was her question. She's like, you know, I when he's sleeping and stuff or whatever, whatever the case may be, you know, if we're we're not doing something, um, you know, I can help with laundry, et cetera, et cetera. And we said, no, honestly, we just want you to kind of concentrate on engaging with him. Like we think that's really important that he, you know. You yeah, engage. She, she was like, do you want me to, like, meal prep his meals and do his laundry and, like, clean his room and, and all we're that? we're like, no. We just want you to engage with him. Yeah. Just... And, and she has not disappointed. <laughs> she never turns the TV on the entire time she's here. She constantly is, like, getting on the floor. She's, like, crawling around on her hands and knees, playing peekaboo around the edge of the sofa or, like, you know, around the kitchen island. They, like, go around and around and around on the kitchen island. Like, she plays with him the entire time. Reads him books, like goes in his room and plays in there with his toys and books in there. Comes back out to the living room, takes him on walks. She she almost is never on her phone at all. No, the last time my mom my mom actually watched quote air quotes for the, no one that can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, watched Rhett. Um, she literally had him in his walker outside while she was on the phone and our gate was open, and he was like trying to escape to the street. Mind you, is a year old in a little buggy on wheels. Like, it's just... Night and day. It's night and day, and this new nanny is just amazing. And the great part is, is, like, Rhett loves her. Loves yeah. her. Yeah, he interacts really well with her. Like, she... As, as soon as she comes in the door, he immediately, like, gets a smile on his face, and he, like, starts to crouch to get ready for, like, hide-and-seek. Because mm-hmm. that, that is the routine. Like, as soon as she arrives... She, like, plays, like, one or two rounds of, like, peekaboo with him and then, like, you know, puts her stuff down, changes her shoes, et cetera. Like, it's, gets relaxed and gets comfy. But, like, he loves it. He just belly laughs and, like, has so much fun. <laughs> it's so awesome to, like, be able to see it and hear it. And when I'm, like, working or I'm on a conference call and I can hear him just belly laughing away. And I, it just gives me such, like, a peace. It was tough the last couple of weeks because Enzo was on uh, spring break and he's, he spent a week at his dad's and a week with us. In the week that he was with us, we told him. We said, "Hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of leave her alone because she's not here to be- watch you. She's yeah. not getting paid to watch and you." And he is a very chatty Kathy, mm-hmm. and he would follow her around and, <laughs> and and just talk to her. And she, you know, she was a she just played along with it, never complained about it, just did it. And we were, I was constantly like Enzo, 
like, come on, dude. Like, What's really funny is so like I gave Enzo like, hey, while she's here, you need to take an hour and listen to like your aud- audible book, like Harry Potter and play with your Legos in your room, um, you know, for an entire hour of the time that she's here because I-, I need to give you tasks so that you're not just following her around. <laughs> so, so Enzo like goes in his room and like listens to the Harry Potter and like starts playing with his Legos and he has his door like cracked. And so you know, Rhett comes in at some at one point and so then the nanny comes in and she's like, What are you doing? And he's like, Oh, I'm just doing some Legos and listening to Harry Potter. She's like, Oh, well like I'm folding Rhett's laundry, like I'll just fold it in here. And, <laughs> right. and we're sitting here trying to tell him like he can't be bothering right. her. <laughs> like I think she just felt like, oh like he's all alone. <laughs> I'm like, it's fine, it's totally fine. Oh man. Like it was cute though. Like it made me laugh. She's she's when, however long we have her, whatever season it is, right now she's amazing. Yeah. And that she, makes her really happy. Yeah. I, I just think it's so important that, you know, that time that she is here, she spends that time with him and engaging with him. And because it's hard. I mean, it's hard for kids that age to be, you know, that's why I don't like my mom watching him. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't engage with him. She she puts him in a bouncer, puts him in a little cart or whatever, and that's it. You know, then she's on her phone. The entire time. Or she's in my office talking to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, like this is not what this is about. This is not what I wanted from it. It's not so, come out and hang out with us. No, this is, this is what, you know, hang out with the baby. Hang out with your grandson. Mm-hmm. But again, like she, she gives it like four or five minutes and she's like, okay, what thing can I put you in to yeah, continue? So I can go talk to my son about the boat. <sighs> it's exhausting. So anyway, well, I think, long story short, we're, I think we're just so grateful for her and all that she's brought to the household and... You know, eventually he'll, he'll be going into a daycare of sorts. But until then, she's been great. And she's helped you. She's been willing to stay at later when I travel and yeah. help you out and make sure you're okay. You're not by yourself. And I think that's really awesome. She's funny because she's like, I, I showed her the pictures of the smoothie and like I sent them to her. And uh, she was like, they just capture his like essence and personality so well. They're like his little like mischievous smile that he gets. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. His new thing is his bashfulness. He is. He does get bashful. It's That's so funny. funny to see. Like uh, you were, you were doing the the voice, or I mean, you were doing the video chat, video chat with uh, me while I was gone, and I would say, you know, like I'd say, "Hey, buddy," like that, and he would just big rosy cheeks and put his head down like he was embarrassed and just. <laughs> It's so interesting. Like, yeah, it makes you wonder, like, what is he thinking and feeling? Like, is he just overwhelmed with emotion in that moment? Yeah. Like, it's it's so cute, but it's so funny to watch. Because <laughs> he's just like, I can't take it. I have to look away. I'm so happy and I'm so in love with my dada. We're, uh, we're, we're going to be bringing in, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a new schedule with Enzo. Um, that we're hoping gives me and Bridget a little bit more time for us. Um, to concentrate on our relationship and, um, we're going to weeks on week off with his dad and his dad has agreed to it, which has been, which is great. You know, I'm glad yeah. that he was willing to do that, but we just feel with Enzo, you know, seven years old, it would make more sense now than it did when he was younger. Um, but we're actually, you know, we're looking forward to that. It'll be, you know, the weeks will be long, <laughs> you know, but I like they're long, but like we, this, what, seven or eight day run we just had, it didn't seem super long. No. And, like, he was home the entire time, too. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't go anywhere. But I think that having the days all together consecutively, it almost makes... I don't want to say it makes it easier, but it makes it go a little bit quicker. Yeah. Because, like, you just... You hit your run and you know, like, okay, cool. Now I had that same amount of time off, you know, and it gives Rhett a chance to, like, be used to having his brother around during that longer run. It gives Enzo a chance to be at one parent's house for that school week, which is nice. Yeah. So then he's not like, oh, I left my homework at the other one's house or, you know, I did that with them. Like that parent is in charge of their schoolwork for that entire week. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. It'll make it easier come summertime too, if we ever want to put them in camps or anything like that. Yeah. And we're thinking about like, if you and Rhett decide to travel a little bit with me for work. On the off weeks. On the off weeks, it makes it a little bit easier for that. On the on week, it makes it a lot easier too, for us to go and do like our little beach trip. Mm-hmm. In the summertime? Yeah. We'll have a little bit longer time because we used to have to ask Jordan, hey, can we take him for a couple more days? We'll swap days with you. Or, or... we always had to do a weekend because we only had our our longer run, our five-day run would be 
three of it like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we always had to do a weekend. We couldn't do like a, hey, I want to do a Tuesday to, you know, Friday beach trip or something. It's amazing all these different things that you have to, you start to concentrate on as you become an adult. Like mm-hmm. the things with the kids, the schedules, et cetera. Like when you're 18 years old, that's the last thing you're thinking about. Yep. You're not thinking about, yeah, I wonder what we're going to do for my, for our, you know, child care and, you know, how we're going to handle these different situations. It's just, I don't know. A lot to it. It's interesting, for sure. If there was a manual, I would definitely read it. <laughs> There's a podcast. It's called Freezer Mode. Yeah, exactly. We'll walk you through the ins and outs. <laughs> no, we're far from perfect, I'll tell you that. I think we're just taking it a day at a time, trying yeah. to... Every day we're learning something new about our family, each other, the kids. It's And it's always evolving. What's Rhett's new word? Yeah. Talk about... Talk about... The first time you said that and how shocked you were. Well, it was really weird because you asked him a question. We were He was eating and I don't remember. I said, what, do you want more? Oh, yeah. You asked him if he wanted more and he, he literally nodded his head up and down and goes, yeah. And I was <laughs> beside myself. I watched the kid walk for the first time and I was dumbfounded when I saw him like react and just yeah. to you that way. And I was like, holy cow, when did that happen? Like, When it did just, you grow up? Right? And I'm like, it's really depressing. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you're... you're you're growing too fast. Like he's turned in. He's not a baby anymore. He's he's. I mean, he's young. Don't get me wrong, but he's getting older. He's becoming his own little person. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's crazy, and we've been working on the word. Think, yeah, I don't think anybody prepares you for that. For them growing up so fast and growing up into their own beings. And like these milestones that you don't think of, because everyone's like, "Oh, the milestones are crawling and walking and first word." And okay, well, first word is mama, data every time. Mm-hmm. Typically, data then mama. Like it's typically always the first word. People don't prepare you for when your child correctly uses a word in response to a question, right? And you're like, "What?" Like you understood to nod your head and say, "Yeah." And then you don't say no yet, but if I tell you something you want to say no, you kind of look and shake your head, you know, no. Like, that's mind-boggling. They say that babies at this age are extremely intelligent. Oh, yeah. They just don't know how to communicate it. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And they're very receptive of what we're doing. So at least he's not a no baby. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. He will be. Those days will come. It's He's so interesting to watch his little brain, like try to figure stuff out so like he unplugged um like a speaker we have in our room he unplugged it today and it was playing music when he unplugged it and so he immediately like looked down at it and looked at the cord and looked at the speaker and was his brain immediately was like that needs to still be connected for the sound to continue Mm -hmm. and he sat there and he tried to like plug the cord back in into the back of the speaker he just couldn't figure it out he just couldn't quite get it at least he was trying but he like understood immediately like whoops I have somehow caused the music to stop when I separated these two items, a chord from the speaker. So if I put them back together, the music will start again. Which is smart. It's it's so it was crazy to watch and know like that's what his brain was thinking. He just couldn't like get it to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's crazy. He's his whole personality has just evolved. Mm-hmm. You know. I feel like it's one of the harder transitions that they make is that that switch all of a sudden from baby mode to person mode right (laughs) like before they're a baby and like yes they're a person but they they don't have their own identity they don't they don't even know what's going on right they're not like fully aware of everything and then all of a sudden time slips through your fingers and they're on a routine if you stray from their routine or their structure they freak out they don't do well (laughs) like when i travel like our morning routine i you know 5 30 a.m he gets up and Sometimes it's six thirty. Some yeah, seldomly. Um, <laughs> five thirty a.m. He gets up. I go in and get him. I you know I pull him out of the crib. He knows it's me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I come out. We bring him out. I get my coffee. Me and him get some. I get him a light you know snack in the morning. We hang out on the couch and you know we do our normal routine. But when I tr- travel, he doesn't get that routine. And you told me this morning you walked in there and he was asking for Dada. He was. <laughs> I t- like walked in, I opened the blind, turned off his sound and stuff like that. And he was all, da 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 <laughs> You said he kept da, going da. to my office door. Yeah. Susan and I both, um, our nanny and I both noticed it where he kept wandering to your office door and like banging on your office door to like see if you were in there. <laughs> da da, where are you? Just doesn't say the where are you yet. Yep. 
it's so it's just it's so intriguing to watch him grow. It's amazing. It's a special thing. What's that TikTok audio zero to four? Or like you only have four years of right. magic? Yeah. Oh, it's true though. It's in that 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 zero to four range is that range that you really just need to be present in their lives and give them everything you got because that that sets the precedent for the yeah rest. that sets the precedent but also that's like the most that's the biggest time in their lives that you just it's a magical time you know they find that like I I've said it before and I'll say it again like I love what being a, a bonus dad to Enzo has done to you. And then I love what having your own biological kid has done to you. Like when you and I first met and, you know, I introduced you to Enzo and all of that, like one of your biggest concerns is you were like, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to, to be goofy like that. I don't know how to have that like laughter and that joy and just be playful, like a, like a child playfulness, not like now you see sexually me, playful. Now, yeah, now you see me chasing him around the house. And, like, being goofy and, like, doing silly dances in the grocery store just to get him to laugh. And, like, it's amazing the stuff you'll do, any parent will do, to make their kid laugh. Mm -hmm. Especially in that zero to four range. Mm -hmm. Like, people, there's, you won't believe it and you'll be like, Psh, I would not be that person. And then you find yourself standing there and doing a silly ass dance with your whole body and zero fucks given <laughs> for anyone else. Because your kid is belly laughing at it and thinks mm. it's the funniest shit they've ever seen. Mm. You know, like I made pasta tonight and, you know, Rhett was being kind of cranky. And so I was like, spaghetti, the spaghetti and like throwing my arms in the air. And he just looked at me and then just threw his whole body back and started giggling so hard and thought like, mom's the most funny person in the world right now. I love it. <laughs> like he just, it get, he gets so excited. It's very special. It's a special thing. Yeah. You know, I was always so concerned when he was first born that me and him would never bond. And I think our bond is, like, extremely strong. Mm -hmm. You know, me and him have a, a really good relationship. And that's something I'm really, really appreciative of because I didn't really have that with my dad. Yeah. It's hard work because it, it doesn't... You it know, doesn't... It's not like that always, I know. And it doesn't get, it doesn't get any easier necessarily. Yeah, you got to continue with that relationship. It's just, it's it's so interesting to watch him from when he was a baby and irritable and having stomach issues to, you know, when he was a newborn to only wanting mom, not, you know, the only person you could hold him was you. Mm -hmm. uh, to him now, all up my grill, you know, wanting dada and, you know, he, that's all he wants is the time of day, you know, and it's different stages and it's, it's just, it's a good season for him and for me and our relationship. It's awesome. Well, on that note, I think we're going to go ahead and end it for tonight. We appreciate you listening to us, and we, we hope you uh, enjoy that zero to four with your babies and, you know, many years after that. But really pay attention to them at those, those first ages. Few those, first, those first few years, they're going to they're gonna teach you a lot. They've yeah. taught, you know, my son's taught me a lot about myself, about him, about life. Just pay attention. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You can check us out at freezermilk.com or Instagram, freezermilk podcast. Until next week, guys. Thanks. Don't forget, parenting is a trip. We are all here on the journey with you together. Thanks so much for listening.